Final temperature of mixtures, Richmond's law. Richmond's law of mixtures describes the final temperature resulting in thermodynamic equilibrium when two bodies with different initial temperatures are brought into contact. In this video we will derive the formula for calculating such a final temperature. So let's get started. Adiabatic mixing. If two bodies with different initial temperatures are brought into contact with each other, the temperatures will become more and more equal. Eventually, a thermodynamic equilibrium will be reached. The temperatures have then completely equalized and a common final temperature has been established, which is also referred to as the mixing temperature. One can observe such an equalization of temperatures, for example, when pouring hot water into a cooler glass. While the glass is heated by the hot water, the water cools down on the relatively cold glass. After some time, the different initial temperatures have equalized and the glass has the same temperature as the water inside. The final temperature lies between these two initial temperatures. Depending on how much water is poured into the glass, the final temperature is shifted towards higher or lower values. With a larger amount of water, it can be assumed that a higher final temperature results, since more hot water is present and causes greater heating of the glass. In the following, it will be shown how the final temperature can be determined when two bodies are in thermal contact with each other. It is assumed that heat is only transferred between the two considered bodies. Heat transfer to the surroundings is thus neglected. Such a thermal process, neglecting an unwanted heat transfer to the surroundings, is also called an adiabatic mixing. Derivation of the formula for calculating the final temperature. In the following, we will consider the example of hot water and a colder glass. If the hot water is poured into the cool glass, then heat is transferred from the water to the glass. This causes the glass to heat up due to absorbed heat. At the same time, the water cools due to the heat given off until a final temperature is reached. Let us now consider the energetic processes at the water and at the glass separately from each other. While the temperature of the water drops due to the released heat, the temperature of the glass rises due to the absorbed heat until a final temperature is established. The general relationship between transferred heat and temperature change of a body is given by the heat capacity of the considered object. The heat capacity of a body describes how much heat energy is required to change the temperature of the considered body by 1 Kelvin or 1 degree Celsius. The product of heat capacity and temperature change thus provides the transferred heat energy. With this relationship, we can now determine the heat energies transferred in each case on the basis of the temperature change. The temperature differences can be calculated on the basis of the initial temperatures and the resulting final temperature. Note that the initial temperature of the water is greater than the final temperature, while the initial temperature of the glass is lower than the final temperature. The temperature differences in the two equations were therefore chosen to give positive values for the amounts of heat in each case. Since we assume in our example that there is no heat loss to the surroundings, heat energy can therefore only be transferred between water and glass. Due to the conservation of energy, the heat energy released by the water during the temperature equalization corresponds exactly to the amount of heat absorbed by the glass. So if we equate both equations, we see that with known heat capacities and initial temperatures, the only unknown quantity is the final temperature. We can therefore solve this equation for this final temperature. To do this, we first eliminate the round brackets by multiplying the term outside the brackets by each term inside the brackets. Now we arrange the terms so that the terms containing the final temperature are on the left side of the equal sign and the remaining terms containing the initial temperatures are on the right side. Now we factor out the final temperature. In the last step, we solve this equation for the final temperature by dividing the right-hand side by the term in the round bracket. This formula for calculating the final temperature is also known as Richmond's Law of Mixtures. When looking at this equation, the question arises as to how the given heat capacities can be determined. The heat capacity of a homogeneous object can be calculated using the so-called specific heat capacity as a substance-dependent quantity. In contrast to the absolute heat capacity of an object, denoted by the capital letter C, the specific heat capacity, denoted by the lowercase letter C, indicates the heat capacity of a substance per kilogram of mass. The heat capacity of an object is thus obtained by multiplying the specific heat capacity by the mass of the object. Using this relationship in the formula for calculating the final temperature, then the final temperature can also be determined on the basis of the specific heat capacities and the masses of the objects involved. Example 
In the following, we assume a glass with a mass of 100 grams. The specific heat capacity of glass can be assumed to be 720 joules per kilogram and Kelvin. The initial temperature of the glass is room temperature with 20 degrees Celsius. This corresponds to a temperature of 293 Kelvin or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now 200 milliliters of water with a mass of 200 grams is poured into the glass. The initial temperature of the water is 60 degrees Celsius. This corresponds to a temperature of 333 Kelvin or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The specific heat capacity of water can be assumed to be 4,200 joules per kilogram and Kelvin. With these given values, we can now calculate the final temperature resulting in thermodynamic equilibrium using the formula derived previously. If we put in these values, a final temperature of 330 Kelvin results. This corresponds to a temperature of 57 degrees Celsius or 134 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, we also get this result if we use the temperature straight in the unit degree Celsius or degree Fahrenheit. Thus, when using this formula, the temperatures do not necessarily have to be given in the base unit Kelvin. Generalizing the formula to any two objects in thermal contact. The formula for calculating the final temperature was derived using the example of water and glass. However, this formula can be generalized to any two objects in thermal contact. It does not matter whether it is a solid and a liquid or two solids that are brought into thermal contact. For example, when two different metals with different initial temperatures come into contact with each other and a common equilibrium temperature is then reached. Here too, it must of course be assumed that there is no heat loss to the surroundings. The given formulas also apply to mixtures of two liquids. Therefore, in general, the final temperature in thermodynamic equilibrium for any two bodies 1 and 2 with different initial temperatures T1 and T2 and different heat capacities C1 and C2 can be calculated using the following formulas. For the application of the formulas it does not matter which of the two bodies is the warmer and which is the colder. It should also be mentioned again that the temperatures do not necessarily have to be used in the unit Kelvin, but can also be used in the unit degree Celsius or degree Fahrenheit. Note that in practice, when two bodies are brought into thermal contact, the heat energy transferred from the hotter body does not completely benefit the cooler body. Part of the heat energy is also transferred to the surroundings. For example, when mixing two liquids in a vessel, part of the heat is also transferred to the vessel. The final temperature of the mixture will therefore be lower than the theoretically calculated final temperature due to the heat losses. However, the validity of Richmond's law must be limited for the case that a phase transition occurs during the equalization of temperatures. This is the case, for example, when ice cubes are poured into a warm beverage. In this case, heat is transferred from the beverage to the ice cubes not only by the heating of the ice cubes, but also by the melting of the ice cubes. This extra amount of heat must then also be taken into account. We will go into this case in more detail in another video. Special Cases of Richmond's Law of Mixtures When mixing two identical substances, for example when pouring hot water into a cold water bath, or when bringing two steel blocks together, the specific heat capacities are identical, so that the final temperature that arises is ultimately independent of these specific heat capacities. In this case, you can cancel out the specific heat capacities in the formula. That means, no matter which substances are brought into thermal contact with each other, as long as they are identical, the final temperature will be the same in all cases. If, furthermore, the masses of the two objects are equal, the final temperature results from the arithmetic mean of the initial temperatures. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.